Alright, so listen up. I very well may have just created the most powerful squad of unexpected Pokemon of all time. I honestly, I shouldn't even be uploading this video, because now it's going to be out into the world. Their power has been revealed, but you can't stop me. I'm out here doing it for the content. Listen, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that sub button. It's free. It only takes you a second. You can always change your mind later, but it really helps out the channel. And hey, I've got plenty more upcoming projects. I'm having a lot of fun with the Gen 9 metagame. It's super fun and refreshing. But anyway, looking at the matchup today, I am scared, because this is a pretty damn meta team, and there's a lot of scary stuff over there, but... I've got the power, truly, on my squad of misfits. We have the ability to make this happen. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into the match. So of course, I'm gonna lead off with the absolute goat of Gen 9. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the boy Spidops. They come out here looking ugly as shit. I got my stick arms ready to make some stuff happen. And they actually end up leading off with a Toxtricity. Now, Toxtricity is a very scary Pokemon and that is mainly because of the ability for this thing to Terrastalize. He does actually end up going for the Terra Turn 1 here. As I'm expecting Terra Normal in Boom Burst, that is an extremely powerful combo. And if this thing is holding choice specs, there's not a damn single thing in the world that's thick enough to handle that attack unless your mom's ass is somehow on the field. But uh, he ends up going for the Boom Burst here. I'm fine with that because Spidops is carrying the Focus Sash. And my main objective with this Sticky Boy is just to go right for uh, the Sticky Webs. So one thing about him going for the Terra on turn one, I'm actually fine with it. It, it allows me to kind of see early on what I'm going to have to deal with. There's not going to be any kind of crazy wild cards later on. So I decided to stay in here. I decided to go for the Sucker Punch. Just, I don't know, get some chip damage. Like I said, there's I have nothing that can switch into this. I don't have a Ghost type. And Spidop's 1 HP have an ass is not going to be saved for later. He's slow as shit and can't really do much. So I decided to go ahead and sacrifice the boy at the cost of getting a little bit of chip damage off on that thing. But I now have some answers, and I decided to go into the Honey Baked Ham. The Oink alone is an absolute legend, and you're about to see why. You're thinking to yourself, what the hell am I going to send to this weird utter tail have an ass dude into a toxicity that's going to fuck me up with a boom burst? Well, the reason for that is because I'm actually Terra Ghost, and I can just go right for the Terra Ghost. If this thing is choice specs like I imagine it is, uh, it's likely just going to stay in there, go for the boom burst. It's not going to affect me because I'm now a dead piggy. And I can go ahead and start setting up with this thing. So, I go ahead and put the old ghost on my head. And now everything's out onto the table. We've both revealed what our Terras are. He does end up going for the Boom Burst. I can't hear shit because I'm a ghost. And this allows me to now go for the Stuff Cheeks. So, what Stuff Cheeks does is it activates my Berry, but also gives me a sharp defense boost. So, I activate my Salic Berry, which boosts my speed. And then the, the boost from the Stuff Cheeks gives me, you know, a nice little defense boost. So... I'm in pretty good position. The sticky web is up. I got a speed boost. I'm going to be able to outspeed pretty much anything here. And now I just decide to go right for a body slam. So uh, he now sees the pig as the threat like he rightfully should. This thing is an absolute beast. He may be ugly as hell. They really they really kind of hoed us with Lechonk there. I mean, we were we expected greatness. But, I mean, hey, Mrs. Piggy's <laughs> pretty nice too. So uh, I go for the body slam as he brings in the Clod Sire. Of course, that thing is defensive as tits, and it's not going to be a two hit KO on the body slam unfortunately I just decided to stay in I'm like you know what I can live any attack from this thing and I'm not afraid of no piece of poop on the other side of the field so I just go for another body slam there as he just ends up going for the toxic uh, which is fine it's gonna slowly whittle me down but I'm gonna be able to try to get some stuff going with this oink alone uh, before I go down he does have some mons on his side of the field that I am worried about um, but against the toxicity there it was too nice to just not try to set this boy up so uh, now I just decide I have a couple options. He's probably going to switch here. I'm going to go for a body press, uh, expecting him to potentially switch into something on the body slam. Uh, I decide, fuck, I'm a press yet instead of slam you. I don't know what the hell the difference would be. Uh, but body press is a good move on this thing because it does benefit from that defense boost. And it's actually pretty damn powerful. But uh, he just decides to go for the old toxic protect route. Stells me out for another turn. Take a little bit more damage here and it's going to start racking up pretty quick. But... Uh, now I'm like, okay, another Body Slam just kills. So I decided to click the Body Slam. However, he's going to instead switch into the Skeletor. It goes into Pablo, young Pablano. Uh, that's actually what I nicknamed uh, my starter in my playthrough. Um, but he comes in, gets activated on the sticky webs there. Of course, Body Slam does not touch him because he is, in fact, Ghost. We are Ghost buddies over here. Uh, I really should have clicked the Terra Blast there. There was really no reason for me not to. Um, expecting Pablo to come in, I really should have gone for the Terror Blast on the switch in, but it's fine. I decided to go for it now. I'm, of course, fast as hell here. So the Terror Blast is going to do a, a decent chunk to this Skeledurge, and it's actually going to tell me a little bit about this Mon. It tells me he's not super defensive. Uh, you never know what to expect from these damn things. A lot of the time, they're just full-out defensive, but 
He does go for the Shadow Ball there. I'm actually able to live it because I am some thick cut bacon. I honestly wasn't expecting to live that. Uh, however, of course, you know, the poison is just going to knock me down and Honey Bake's, you know, reign is going to come to an end. But what I did do is I actually was able to weaken the, the Claude Sire down to the point where it's going to be easy to kind of take care of later with anything else on my team. Um, and now Skeledurge is actually to the point where I can take care of that thing pretty easily too. So honestly, being able to kind of wall break a little bit here uh, was pretty nice for me. So now I get a free switch. I decide to bring in the Cloth, the absolute legend. The big meaty Claws is ready to come in here. Slide some rocks his way, and then we got some gator meat on the menu, boys. So I go for the rock slide. Of course, I miss, because why wouldn't I miss there? Um, so unfortunately, I get the miss. He ends up going for the earth power. I'm able to live, and this actually doesn't end up too bad, because this is going to activate my anger shell. So what the anger shell does uh, is it's basically a nice little shell smash. However, you just have to sacrifice half of your health to get to it. Uh, so it's going to give me boosts and everything except for defenses. I ended up dropping my defenses, but... With the sticky web and the speed boost and the citrus berry, honestly, Toph is in a pretty solid situation now. Uh, it's really not looking too bad. He does, however, uh, have some answers to this thing, which is why I was just hoping to come in, kill this thing with a quick rock slide, switch out, and save it for later. But it looks like, fuck it, I'm all in on this bad boy now, as my shell is angry as hell. So, uh, I end up going for another rock slide here. He is going to switch, and his answer to this thing is the great... <coughs> So while I don't have anything super great against this bad boy, I can at least try to whittle it to the point where my late game sweepers can make some stuff happen. Because like I said, I'm playing for the end game here. It's looking, you know, not great. Nothing, I, <laughs> I haven't killed anything. But what I have done is whittled things and gotten some chip damage to the point where I'm confident in uh, my late game boys. So, old Great Tusk here is likely just going to go for the rapid spin. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for the high horsepower. Screw it, I'm going to try to get as much damage as possible. He does go for the rapid spin. Uh, which does give him a speed boost, but after coming in on the sticky web plus my speed boost, he's not going to be able to outspeed, and I can get one more attack off on this thing, uh, which should easily put it in range for me to take care of later. So I decide, you know what, Toph, we're just going to go ahead and sack you here. going to go for one more high horsepower, as uh, it's unfortunate he was able to rapid spin away the sticky web, because that is important for this team. Um, but it's looking like the, the remaining Pokemon I have are honestly fine without the webs on their end. So... Um, he does end up taking care of me there, but now I get a free switch into whatever I would like. And now is when we get to see young Lightning McQueen and his sick-ass punching strategy. He's ready to come in and absolutely right-hook some bitches into the Shadow Realm. So here is what this Palmat is built to do. Don't let his looks fool you. He may be cute, but he will absolutely punch your ass into next week. Um, this, thing, this thing is basically going to be carrying all punching moves. He has the ability called Iron Fist, which, you know, gives boosted damage to punching moves. He's also carrying the Punching Glove item, which boosts punching moves. And this boy is an absolute threat. So the Ice Punch takes care of the Great Tusk. Now in comes a uh, young Diamond Head, has an ass, got the VVS on his head. Uh, Toxicity, of course, a Mock Punch. He, served, he had no chance. There ain't no way you're living that. I punched that shit right off his head, and down goes the Toxicity. So with the priority with the Mock Punch... Um, with Stab, you're honestly going to be able to get so much damage off of this thing, it's insane. So, now he decides to go into the Salamence. Now, I'm really hoping it's not Intimidate, hoping Moxie, but it is Intimidate. And now, I'm like, okay, Ice Punch, even with an Intimidate, actually has a decent chance to get a KO here. So, I'm like, you know what? We're rolling that dice, baby. Pomat is not afraid. I am Lightning McQueen. I don't have much that can switch into this thing, and I figure this is, I have to go for it here. I go for the Ice Punch right to the face that is actually going to take care of the mence i do get a critical hit which is unfortunate for them however like i said i think it was close to a 50 percent chance that that kills anyway because i'm telling you this punch in pika is, is insane so i'm able to get the ko there uh, which is amazing because now this actually puts me in great range i'm really wishing wishing that i had stealth rock up uh, actually if i had rocks up that salamence had no chance to live uh, but in comes the skeledurge and i'm thinking okay palmat is kind of my win condition there's a king gamut in the back and I haven't even used the plug yet, so I'm thinking I could probably switch right into Dunsparce here. I can ensure that I can take an attack or two uh, and try to finish this thing off with an Earthquake. I'm just worried about uh, Palmat, for whatever reason, not being able to grab a KO there. Um, so I come in on Earth Power. The Dunsparce doesn't give a shit about that. I'm thick. I'm, look at the, the length of this boy. <laughs> the new Dunsparce evolution is absolutely insane. It just did a long-ass butt plug, but... Um, of course, you know, I'm bulky. I'm able to take that. I'm actually max HP, max attack on this thing. It's built to, uh, similarly to uh, just regular Dunsparce. I mean, he looks the same. He does the same shit, pretty much. I can go for the coils, glares, uh, headbutt flinches along with Earthquake for coverage. But I'm thinking I just go for the Earthquake here. If it doesn't knock it out, I can easily 
uh, then just take it out later. The Torch Song, you know, is going to do a decent amount of damage, plus give him the special attack boost. But I go for the Earthquake here. He's actually able to live with like 4 HP, which is annoying because I wanted to see, uh, you know, the boy the Dunsparce make some shit happen. But don't worry. Dunsparce will get some stuff going. I believe in this Pokemon. It's actually extremely strong. And there is a couple different strategies you can use with this thing. I have a couple of them uh, that I do want to try out. But uh, my main objective there was, like I said, just to try to whittle this thing down to ensure that something like a Brave Bird uh, from my Squawkabilly can <laughs> take care of it. So uh, he finishes me off with a Torch Song there. Uh, now I'm confident that either, you know, Palmat or the Bird can come in and finish this thing off and then hopefully uh, be able to grab the match for me. So... Boy's over here eating his leftovers like it's a damn picnic, but boy, it is no picnic for you because you are about to meet the absolute goat, Elvis. I bring in basically Swallow with a sweet haircut, uh, which is what I've been calling this bad boy because it's basically going to be a gut set with a uh, kind of just Brave Bird facade. It's also got U-turn and parting shot there for potential momentum builders, um, but for the most part, I just go right for the Brave Bird there without even, you know, guts activated. Easily, that's going to get the KO. Uh, I get hurt myself with some recoil, and now I get... Uh, the flame orb activated so now i'm at, i'm sitting at maximum overdrive over here uh, with that burn activates my guts ability boosts my attack uh, he brings in the clod sire who you know stands no chance because like i said earlier luckily i was able to whittle this thing down uh, with the oink alone so he's gonna end up going for the protect i imagine just to kind of scout what i'm going to go for uh, but my parrot has you know no tricks under his sleeve he's just here for this kind of raw damage i should probably put protect on this set to try to ensure that i can get that guts boost uh, no matter what but if you switch it into something, it can, it can work really well, plus give you the, the option for the parting shot if needed. So, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this bad boy off with a facade. There is not much that wants to take this. His last Pokemon in the back is going to be the King Gambit. And that, that is a scary Pokemon because it has access to a uh, potential Sucker Punch, which it's probably going to be carrying. Uh, but of course, it's also just Steel Dark type. So, neither of my stabs are going to be able to knock it out. But that's why we conserve Lightning McQueen in the back. Because that Mach Punch is basically going to be my win condition. And so in comes young Shogun, the Supreme Overlord. Going to give him a boost. All his teammates are dead. He's got an insane boost in attack right now. So I'm thinking he probably just goes ahead and knocks me out with a Sucker Punch. There's no reason for me to really switch. Um, and I'm thinking if this thing is Focus Sash, I basically need to kind of chip that away. So I go for the Facade. He actually does not Sucker Punch here. Um, I'm able to get a little bit of chip damage there. And he's going to go ahead and finish me off with a Kowtow Cleave. Um, so down goes young Elvis Parrot, but... Like I said, the legend in the back, the Palmat, is going to be able to go ahead and exercise that punching glove just one more time. This thing is extremely valuable. Uh, it's also rocking the, Terry, uh, the Terra fighting. Uh, if possible, you can get that Mach Punch boosted just even further, and it's insane. So I go for the Mach Punch. Of course, that boy is allergic to this Knuckle Sandwich, and that is going to be the end of the game. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm super excited that I was able to actually get this entire team to do stuff. Literally every Mon contributed to this match. And you just, you love to see it. So thank you guys again. Make sure to leave a like. Leave a comment. Let me know what kind of Pokemon you'd like to see me use. I'll definitely test some stuff out. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.